Welcome to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. Are you over 40 and tired of struggling with your weight? Do you feel like you're constantly starting over with your nutrition and fitness? I'm Lil, a certified nutrition coach and former registered nurse, and I too have been there. At the age of 44, I decided I was done with being stuck in the vicious diet cycle. I became a nutrition coach and created the Feel Your Best formula for women who are ready to do things differently. If you're ready to build a better relationship with food, get your energy back, build muscle, lose fat, and keep it off for good, then you're in the right place. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's build your formula for feeling your best. Hello, welcome back to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. I am Lil. I know it's been a minute. As I said in my previous episode, I'm working on a really big project that is taking a lot of my time. And of course, life has thrown some lovely curveballs my way over the past month. And I'm doing my best. (laughs) But I wanted to hop on here real quick because I hear from you guys, Lil, where's the podcast? What's going on? And um, also... There's things in my brain that I love having the podcast here to talk to you about um, because I know sometimes you just see certain things popping up. I see it with my clients. I see it with myself and I think, okay, I need to talk about this because if I'm seeing it happening with my clients, if I know I'm experiencing it, then I know there's a good chance you are experiencing it or you will experience it at some point and you can use this podcast episode to help you work through it and as a resource when you get there. As you saw from the title, what we're talking about today is tracking fatigue and what to do when you just feel like you need a break from tracking macros. Now, you know my whole theme here, my message to you is wanting to walk away from diet culture, from obsessing over getting skinnier to build habits that support you physically, support you mentally, and let you just live your life without this constant burden, cloud, or stress of losing weight or what should I be eating? What should my workouts look like? I want to help you cut through all the confusion and understand how to build a day-to-day life that is healthy, that you look forward to every day waking up to, or if you're having, you know, not the best day, knowing the world's not going to come to an end if you don't 100% stick to your meal plan, if you don't do that workout, and understanding that the key to happiness is flexibility. And that is what is missing in the general diet culture, fitness culture, influence culture out there. And I want to, you know, be a contrarian to that messaging because I think it's harmful. And I think it's time that, you know, we let go of that way of thinking. And here's the thing. Even though I use macro counting and tracking and calorie counting, I use these tools with my clients. I use it with myself, but it has a time and a place. And we can get to a place where we are just over it. We are fatigued. We are tired of picking up our phone and entering what we had for breakfast, what we had for lunch, what we had for that snack. And it just, it isn't exciting anymore. It feels more like a burden than a relief. And I always want you to have some sense that the actions that you're taking have a bigger picture, a purpose. There's a reason why you're doing it. We're just not blindly following a plan because someone tells you to. 
And I think if you are getting fatigued from tracking, then that's a sign that you need to kind of step back and just kind of take a look at where you are, where you want to go, why you're feeling this way. And I can't possibly address all the reasons that someone might be feeling this way. But number one, I want to acknowledge that it exists. I have been there myself. And with my clients, I say from the beginning, the goal is that you aren't really ever going to have to track your food again. This is all a learning experience so that you can just have an understanding of what your body needs, what feels right for you, and then you can just forget about it. But that doesn't necessarily also address the entire whole picture because our our lives are dynamic, things are changing, our goals change, our life circumstances change. And I personally like knowing that, hey, if I'm feeling out of control, if I just need to focus on myself, if I need to feel better about myself, I can actually pick up that tracking and start working towards a goal. And it's this completely, you know, objective way of tracking your self-care and am I fueling my body right and am I doing things that are going to move me in the direction that I want to go. So number one before we dive in I want to make sure you understand it is absolutely okay to take a break. It is absolutely okay to stop tracking and the only thing we want to do when we take a break is kind of make sure we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right. We don't want to take a break from tracking and then all of a sudden go back to eating the way that we were eating before we started tracking that we know made us gain weight, made us have crappy energy, we didn't feel good about ourselves, and we don't want to go back there, right? But what is this middle ground? So we're going to talk about that as well. Now, why can taking a break be beneficial? So number one, understand that it doesn't mean you have failed. It doesn't mean that you're not being healthy. It just means that you need a break. If you're picking up your phone to track your food and you're just over it, you're tired of it, you've put the work in, you have an understanding of what your day-to-day eating looks like when you feel your best, then that can actually be a sign that you really, maybe you don't need to be tracking anymore. And I encourage my clients to start with just one day a week once they've built a foundation to start with one day a week. Usually it's Saturdays, sometimes maybe a Friday that you know what, just don't track your food and understand that the world's not going to fall apart. You're not going to gain 10 pounds in one night and trust yourself to have the confidence that that time you put in to educate yourself by tracking your food, by tracking your weight on a daily basis, that guess what? You can do this on your own. You can be free and let go of the tracking, at least for one day in the beginning. And if you are fearing letting go of tracking, then that's something that maybe you need to examine. That means maybe you don't trust yourself. It means you maybe you really haven't learned how to really eyeball what an adequate serving of protein looks like for you. So maybe you need to go back to learning and approach it differently. Because if you are just tracking your food and you're not actually trying to absorb the, you know, what that looks like, what you feel like, and making those connections in your brain where it can become something that is a no brainer where you just know, okay, this is the amount of chicken that works for me. I know that I want to take four meatballs when I have spaghetti because that works for me. And if you don't get to the point where you're actually processing and recording and remembering what those meals look and feel like to you, then you're not really doing the inner work. You're relying on an external guidance and an external rule, which is your tracker, to make decisions. And you're not making those decisions from that place that comes inside of you. So... It's always looking at if things don't feel good, why is that? You know, what what is the cause behind it? 
And hopefully it's because you've done the work and you're like, I guess I just don't really need to do this anymore. Let me take a break. So the benefits of stepping away, even if it's just for a week, you know, say you go on vacation or, you know, you have a really heavy workload at your job one week as your coach, I might say to you, you know, this would be a really good time to just step away from the tracking and take that pressure off of yourself to reduce your stress and anxiety because you have something else that you're focusing on. And maybe we don't want the tracking to, you know, be in the mix. There might be other times where I would suggest to you, you know what, this is actually a situation where tracking is going to be beneficial for you because you need to learn how to make decisions during this specific temporary phase that you're in. So the answer is not always black and white, it's nuanced, but stepping away from tracking can reduce stress and anxiety. It can help maybe reconnect you with some more intuitive eating where you sit down to have a meal and you're being mindful. You're not just mindlessly shoveling the food in, filling up your plate. And you're asking yourself, does this look like the meals that I was eating while I was tracking that I know make me feel really good? And sometimes too, especially often when my clients go on vacation, they're excited to get back into it when they get back or start a fat loss phase when they get back. And taking that break, there's so many parts of our life where taking a break just renews our excitement over something. So that could be a reason to take a break too. And when you come back, you're going to be ready, you know, to go all in or, you know, really dial things in. And one really important thing that I have learned through this process is the importance I call them goal sprints. So life is not a sprint and it's also not a marathon. I know people say that all the time, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I think it's more of a walkabout. (laughs) I don't know much about the Australian outback living in the bush other than Crocodile Dundee movies, but I know that the concept is you go on this walkabout where you slowly walk, walk it out there and you survive. And I think it's kind of a great analogy for life because life isn't a marathon either. (laughs) Running a marathon, that is hard, right? Um, And I think most of us would prefer to walk through life rather than run. And you're going to have these times where for a temporary amount of time, you are sprinting towards a specific goal. Now, when you get started with tracking your macros, you're sprinting. Those first three months that you work with me, we are working. We are, I'm teaching you new things. You're learning things about yourself. You're learning how to use your tracker. You're learning what workouts work for you. There is this whole comprehensive plan where we are focusing time, energy, and this is a priority in your life for at least those first 90 days. And honestly, It can't be like that all the time. I want you to make the most out of those first 90 days with me so that when you move on, then you are not in that sprint mode. So you start off in the sprint and then you're kind of in the marathon mode where, yeah, you're you're still learning new things. It's still very exploratory. You're still understanding yourself. You're finding yourself in different circumstances that may not have occurred during those first 90 days because those those moments within themselves end up being learning moments where we can again explore, you know, how are we going to approach this vacation or an illness or things like that. And you're just learning to navigate your life while focusing on understanding your nutrition and building an overall plan 
that works for you. So you start off with the sprint and then you go to the marathon. And then after the marathon, you have some choices. Do you want to do the walkabout where, yeah, we're, this is just life. We're just, you know, we're getting through life. And I understand what to eat. I understand what my feel your best formula looks like. Or do we want to have another sprint where we do a fat loss phase and we we sprint and during that fat loss phase yeah you got to dial it in you might be packing your lunches you might be being you know very vocal when you're going out with your friends or family for restaurants you know i really need to go somewhere that i can get a meal that's really going to work for me because i'm in a fat loss phase a fat loss phase has to be approached differently than day-to-day -day life when you are in maintenance it needs a level of respect a level of planning so that you can get in get out and be done with it so that in itself is another sprint. And then you go back to learning your new maintenance phase after you have lost the body fat. And then hopefully you move on and get to that point, the ultimate end point where we just want it to be the journey of life, the walkabout. But if you don't, put the time, energy, and effort into these little goal sprints, these little mini phases, then that long-term plan most likely you're kind of never going to figure it out. And that's why you're probably listening to this podcast right now, because so much of what you have done in the past just doesn't give you that clarity and confidence to really just move forward, understanding what works for you. So it can be very beneficial to take a break and understand that diet culture the way I always felt when I was enmeshed in diet culture was I was always supposed to be on the diet. Like I was always supposed to be in that sprint phase and it might be okay to take a break here and there for a vacation or whatnot, but I was always supposed to be going back to that sprint phase. And that's why we burn out. That's why it creates eating disorders. That's why it creates struggles with your mental health, your physical health, because that is not how life is meant to be lived. So what do we do when we need a break? So you want to take a break from tracking. Now what? Now, if it's just a week, you're just going on vacation enjoy yourself. You know, hopefully if you've listened to my previous episode on, you know, why you don't need, you know, why you can just go on vacation and you are who you are, wherever you go, there you are. You know, I love to work out on my vacations. I love to go for walks. I love to eat foods that are full of fresh produce and, you know, grilled fish and all, all kinds of things that support my long-term goals. So for me, going on vacation isn't, that much of a shift from my normal, you know, day-to-day -day life for the most part. But when you decide to take a break and it's going to be for a longer amount of time and you're kind of deciding, should I go back to tracking? Should I move on to a different plan? It does this really work for me? You know, maybe you're having some thoughts like that. I would highly recommend that, like I said, you just don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Take what you've learned. You've learned something, whether you've been tracking for two weeks or you've been tracking for two years. You've learned something and continue that mindful eating. Continue to choose the foods that support your body with the macro and micronutrients that your body needs because that's the whole point of eating is to nourish your body. Be aware of your portions. Make sure you're not heaping on the pasta, you know, make sure that your plate has veggies and protein and you're aiming for a balance of protein, fat, and carbs, even though maybe you're not tracking exact numbers and continue to do some meal prep, continue to do the things that help you nourish your body. You know, you don't want to go back to going through the drive through every day or, you know, going back again to maybe the processed foods, the high fat, high sugar, high calorie foods that you were relying on before. You want to continue to use what you learned while you were tracking so that you don't just go completely backwards and focus on 
those additional habits. Just because you're not tracking doesn't mean that you shouldn't work out. It doesn't mean you shouldn't stop, you know, trying to get your steps in. It doesn't mean that you should give up drinking water and go back to drinking sugary soda or something. Just did the one thing, just maybe take the break from the tracking, but keep doing all those other things that you've worked so hard on while you were building your new habits. So what else can we talk about here? What to do when you're ready to go back to tracking? You know, you're taking the little vacation from tracking and maybe during that time, you're just starting to feel things are slipping, I'm not being honest with myself. And for me, personally, the one thing about tracking is it's the honesty, you can't lie to yourself, you can't play those games with yourself. And tracking is going to keep you honest as long as you're tracking, honestly. And you could start with, you know, just tracking your breakfast, or you could start with just tracking one day out of the week and maybe ease into tracking three days a week and just build back in a way that feels right for you. You don't necessarily have to go back to where you were when you were a beginner, always reminding yourself it's a tool, you know? And speaking of tools, even if you do stop tracking, I didn't say this specifically, um, when I was talking about what to do when you stop tracking, I would really encourage you to continue to weigh yourself because again, that's a tool that's going to keep you honest. And if you know what your fluctuations are and you see it trending up, then that can be a little reminder to yourself like, hey, maybe I got to dial things back. Whatever the reasoning was that I started feeling this way and started maybe overeating or eating foods that are causing me to retain more water and the scale is going up, it's time to explore those things. One thing I have learned is the hardest part of this journey, it's not about the tools, it's not about the system, it's being willing to work through the mindset and the mental reasons that you look to food for comfort, that you maybe avoid being honest about your food intake. And as I've said on here many times, some people really do require full on therapy to work through these issues. And other people might just need to have a better understanding and the facts about how it works to gain and lose weight and all of those things that we talk about on here. Um, And just having that understanding can be so empowering so that we no longer feel confused because when you when you are confused, you lose because you don't know even know what to do. But when we have confidence that if I do this, I can expect that the outcome will be that, then it gives us confidence to make changes, commit to the process, and really just feel good about what we're doing. So if you, you know, need to take a break, and then decide that you want to come back, use what you learned previously to decide how you want to come back. You don't have to come back and track everything seven days a week. You can even just use it as a little bit of motivation and accountability for yourself. And maybe you need to go back into one of those little sprint goal phases that I'm talking about where, yeah, maybe it was summer, maybe you went on vacations, and then all of a sudden reality hits, and you're like, I'm going to put on my jeans for fall, and I can't button them. So maybe it's time to do a little bit of a reality check. And the end goal, the ultimate goal here, like I said, is to just get to that point where you're just in this journey of life, And you don't have to think too much about the food choices and the fitness. All of that just becomes part of who you are as a person. So I hope that I covered everything here. Um, It really was top of my mind during this transition from summer into the fall when sometimes in summer, you know, there's a few too many cocktails, a few too many cookouts, and we feel like 
you know, we just don't really want to focus on our nutrition. We don't want to feel like we're on a diet in any way, shape, or form. And then fall hits and we realize we need to get back into it. So whatever your reason is for listening to this episode, I hope that you're walking away with an understanding that number one, I think all of us experience tracking fatigue in some form. It's totally normal. And you can just take that information and decide how you want to move forward. I hope that you wouldn't decide, oh, I'm just, you know, totally giving up. I'm not going to do anything. This is too hard. I think that ultimately, you know, the tracking is something that, can come and go in our lives. There might be certain times where we rely on it in other times where maybe we don't track for months and months and months. And I know that I personally have started to make note of, you know, some of the people I was following on Instagram, I noticed like this person has been tracking their food. I even saw someone brag about it. They've been tracking their food for like 10 years or something. And in my brain, I just thought, why? (laughs) That sounds horrible. (laughs) I don't want to be that person. I spent the better part of two years tracking my food to learn. But I'll be honest now, the only time I'm going to be tracking now is during a fat loss phase or, you know, maybe a building phase if I'm working on a specific goal. But in my regular day-to-day life, I don't track anymore. I know what I need to eat for breakfast. I know what to order at restaurants. I, you know, I, I've, I've just learned what my plate should look like. Um, I've learned to know what feeling full looks like. I've learned to incorporate, you know, I always talk about, I love my ice cream. I love my Sour Patch Kids and incorporate those things in an overall healthy and balanced way. And everyone is coming you know, you are coming to your journey differently. No two people are the same. And that's why the same exact advice that works for me may not work for you. And that's why I created the Feel Your Best Formula because my guide as your coach through this process is to help you figure out exactly what works for you. And ultimately, that's where the magic happens when you are accountable, when you're responsible, and you feel empowered about the decisions that you're making in your life. All right, that is it for today's episode. As always, you can reach me through the, um, I have been getting some messages here. I need to figure out if I can respond back to you or not because I have not messaged anyone back. But where it says uh, message Lil or text Lil or something like that, you can click on that and you can reach me. If you are interested in coaching, there's links down below where you can reach out to me, fill out a coaching form. And overall, I'm just wishing you a happy and healthy transition from summer into fall. And if you are having some tracking fatigue, then maybe it's time to take a break. All right. Have a great rest of your week and I will see you back here next time. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. If you enjoyed the information and discussion we had here today, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. If you're serious about making changes with your nutrition and fitness, then you definitely want to join my weekly newsletter list as well. You can find the link below and more information in the episode details. That's all for today, and we will see you back here next week for a new episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast.